Good morning, Card Muni. It's RJ back with another video. So let's get to it. Today's random Mike Schmidt item of the day, 1975. The uh, Hostess um, cutout card. So we're on the back of the Hostess packages back in the day. I know a lot of times there's like a, they say there's a variation of the Hostess versus the Twinkies one. I'm never sure about that. I can never find a real clear distinction. This one's beat to heck in my collection, but it is a, an original Hostess cards. They tend to be a little pricey, you know, 15, 20 bucks a pop. Um, I don't know why. Uh, maybe they're just hard to find. Sort of hard to find in good condition, I suppose. Uh, but a really cool card. Nonetheless, my random Mike Schmidt item of the day, my random baseball item of the day, uh, again, I was showing off these old postcards I got from uh, uh, one of my long-ago purchases, as I've talked about. Again, on the back, very basic thing. Just says, photo postcard. Place for you to write your address and place the stamp. This one is Ben Tin Cup. Now, take a look at that face. Um, if you know your baseball history... That face may not be familiar to you, but you look at that face and you think right away, uh, well, I think right away I saw that face and I go, this guy's a Native American. Sure enough, he is. Ben Tincup was a, a Cherokee Indian uh, back in the day. He pitched. The thing that threw me is when I, when I saw the face, I knew who it was only because Ben Tincup pitched all of 48 games in the major leagues. 46 of those with the Phillies back in the mid-teens of 1900. Here he is, though, wearing a Brooklyn Dodgers uniform. And I, I, I was taken aback because I didn't know he played for the Dodgers. In fact, he did not. Ben Tincup was a longtime baseball man after his playing days in a number of capacities, one of which was as a coach for a number of different teams. And in 1940, he was a coach for the Dodgers, which is why he made it onto this cool little postcard in a Brooklyn uniform. Uh, kind of threw me back when I saw Ben Tin Cup wearing a Brooklyn uniform. But I imagine if you look hard enough, you'll find pictures of him in other uh, team uniforms other than the Phillies and Brooklyn Dodgers, since he was such a longtime baseball man. But again, I love looking at awesome images of long-forgotten baseball players. All right. All right, today's trigger question, World Series time still. Um, hopefully the World Series is underway now. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe it is by now. So my question to you is, name for me the only year, the only year in which the World Series ended and the final out occurred outside of the United States. The only time it ever happened. Send me an email with the correct answer, what you're playing for. Cool card from uh, 2022. This is a top card from Topps Gallery 2022. The Roberto Clemente card. Very nice card. If you like yourself some Roberto Clemente. Sorry, I cannot roll my R's. Shout out to Lou Rock uh, and the other guys who can do that. Not me. But anyway, Roberto Clemente. Um, that's what you're playing for. If you can send me correct e an email with the correct answer, I will include my email in the description below along with a repeat of that question. You will have today and tomorrow to answer. We will pick a winner on Sunday. All right. Good luck to everybody on that one today. What I want to show off. So I said I was at my LCS this past weekend and I was on not, not just recently, but like a week ago Saturday and I picked up some cool stuff. One of the cool things I picked up was this. So this was in the $5 box, but it wasn't for $5. Take a look. Photo baseball magnets, a dollar each or $30 for the box. So look at the box. All of those. And I thought to myself, I've got to have them all. Now, what is a photo magnet? I'm just going to pick one out. All right. This is a photo magnet. So, a company called Phoenix 
you know, I'm not sure Phoenix what, but you know, Phoenix was the manufacturer of these little magnets, photo baseball magnets, collected the stars. Now I knew there were several of these, um, and I was hoping that this box had a good good array, and it does. Unfortunately, a good array of the same practical magnet. So there's over 160 players represented in this set, okay? Now I was hoping in buying this that I'd get a good swath of those. Turns out the vast majority are duplicates, okay? But I am gonna show you, I put all of the individual ones I got here in this little box. So these are arranged uh, to show off the individual ones I was able to acquire um, that are um, unique. So I got all of these that, that are unique players. So I think it's about 30 or so. So here you go. Roberto Alomar, still in the Padres back in the day. You can see the original list price here was at $2 for these magnets. These are very inexpensive because nobody freaking wants them. <laughs> I got a Wade Boggs here. I'm sure, I'm not even going to ask John. I'm sure John has multiple versions of that thing. He only did this this one year in 1990, was it 1989. Phil Bradley on the Orioles. And again, it's 160 some, so there's not just stars. Here's a nice George Brett. You might ask, why would I spend all this money taking a chance. Well, even if I didn't get them all, which I didn't, Ellis Burks, now I have that big box of magnets and Christmas is coming up. So uh, people I send, Jose Canseco, people I send stuff to, to expect a magnet in your stocking this year. Gary Carter, Jack Clark, and Will Clark, Eric Davis, I don't know why some of them are red red uh, things. Andre Dawson. Tony Fernandez. Julio Franco. So you can see there's big name stars and certainly a number of Hall of Famers. Kirk Gibson. Mike Greenwell. A lot of Ricky Hendersons. If you're a Ricky Henderson fan, I got plenty of those. Kent Herbeck. Chris James. You got a couple scrub fillies in here. I don't know why. Chris James. Greg Jeffries. Ricky Jordan. Wally Joyner. Fred McGriff. Mark McGuire. A whole lot of Mark McGuire. Like I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 Mark McGuire's is crazy. Dale Murphy. Rafael Palmero. Kirby Puckett. Rafael Ramirez. Got a couple Ripkins if you're interested. Chris Sabo. Mr. Sandberg. Steve Sachs, Mike Schmidt. I, always, I obviously I already had uh, the Schmidt version. Didn't have it sealed, so it's kind of cool to have a sealed version. Um, that's interesting. I already have the magnet, obviously. Kevin Seitzer, Corey Snyder, Daryl Strawberry. I don't know if um, uh, Doug um, over at Don't Talk to Robots and his brother already have the magnet. I would assume they did. Even they have all the basic things. And this is a basic item. Alan Trammell. Andy Van Slyke. Walt Weiss. And Dave Winfield. So that's the extent of um, individual unique ones. I'm sorry. I'm turning the card. The thing here. That is the extent of individual and unique magnets I got. Again, there's about 160 in the collection. I don't know if I'm going to waste my money buying every one of them. You know, I just happened to get, see that box. I took a shot. Uh, didn't have them all. 
not by long shot, but it was fun. And I got a nice big box of stuff to use as trade bait over the years. So I'm not disappointed. You know, 30 bucks is just a bunch of money. Um, and it was fun to go through them. It's fun to have them now. And who knows what I can do with a bunch of magnets, you know? Put them out for the kids or something. I don't know. Anyway, that is my showcase for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please kiss the like, subscribe, and commenting, and all that jazz. I really do appreciate your support. I try my best for everybody else in this great card beating, right? We got one more of these on Friday. A uh, more interesting thing to show off on Friday, so come back to that. And don't forget the trivia recap on Sunday. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.